Negative impedance or resistor is realized in this single op amp circuit. Uh, we want to see how. We want to find the input resistor in this circuit, and also we want to find the voltage gain. Uh, a couple of assumptions here uh, important in order to be to be able to analyze this circuit. One assumption is, as you can see, there are both positive and negative feedbacks in this circuit. Positive feedback on top, V out, V R to R one, and then negative feedback at the bottom, V out, V R three or four. Of course, to have a stable circuit so that it does not saturate, remains in linear region of operation, we need the negative feedback to be more powerful than positive feedback. So uh, therefore, uh, in order to have a stable circuit, so we require a stable circuit so that we remain in linear region. Stable circuit requires negative feedback more powerful than positive feedback, which means uh, the R4 over R3 division, so R4 over R3, should be basically the negative feedback should be greater than R1 over R2. So that is very important requirement in this circuit, which we refer to as equation number one. Now, op amp is ideal. We assume that the positive voltage supply voltage and negative supply voltage properly selected so that this op amp remains in linear region, not saturated. And uh, again, with the stable circuit, then Negative feedback is more powerful, therefore virtual short. So op amp, ideal op amp is in uh, linear region of operation, linear region as a result, operation as a result, virtual short is valid, holds. And by that, so let me just make it clear, virtual short is valid. By that, we mean the voltage at the input positive terminal should be equal to voltage at the input negative terminal. And as you can see, the voltage at the input negative terminal is, simply, is a simple voltage division from V out across R3, R4. Any current like I2 that passed through R3 should be the same current that goes through R4 because nothing can go to the input terminal of op amp because Ideal op amp has in infinite input impedance. So R3, R4 effectively are in series. I2 pass to R3, R4. So therefore, V negative is simply R4 over the, uh, R3 plus R4 times V out. There you go. R4 over R3 plus R4 times V out. Okay, so let's keep this as equation number two. Now, what is the next step? We can write a KCL at input positive terminal to figure out V plus as well. So let's do that. So let's write a KCL at V positive, at positive terminal. So at positive input terminal for the op amp. If you do that, again, you can see that the current I1 that comes from V in nominally, the direction yet to be determined, but let's assume direction is like this. I1 goes to R1. There is nothing that can go to the positive input terminal of op amp. I1 has to go to R2 as well. Effectively, R1 and R2 are in series. So I1 goes to R2 as well. Um, in that case, for this positive input terminal, I can write a KCL saying current to R1 should be equal to current to R2. What is current to R1? V in minus V plus divided by R1. So I1 is equal to Vn minus V plus divide by R1, and then should be equal to as well V plus minus V out divide by R2. Okay, um, let's do a little bit reshuffling of things here so that it looks better. This is a little bit um, convoluted, so we're going to do a multiplication of say two side by R1. So basically we get Vn equal to um, one, one plus R1 over R2 times uh, V plus minus R1 over R2 times V out. Okay, so now I'm going to use number equation 2 and substitute for V plus with R4 over R3 plus R4 times V out. So uh, using 
2, I get Vn is equal to uh, 1 plus R1 over R2, okay, times V plus, which is R4, divided by R3 plus R4, times V out minus R1 over R2. And you know what? Let's factor that V out completely. Okay, so we have a re equation that relates V in to V out nicely like this. We just need a little bit of a simplification here. Let's uh, multiply both sides by R3 plus R4. So what I get is R3 plus R4 times V in is equal to um, 1 plus R1 over R2, very nice, uh, times R4, of course. So you could argue times R4, there you go. Um, and then we have minus um, R1 over R2. And uh, um, we, since we multiplied everything by R3 plus R4, we need to just write this. times V out. Now what happens is, of course, this, let me change the color so that it's more visible. Uh, this R1 minus R1 over R2 times R4 cancel out with what this R1 over R, R2 times R4, this portion. And what remains is simply R4 minus R1 over, over R2 times R3. And then I can move that to the denominator on the other side. Therefore, what I get is Voltage gain, or simply gain, is V out over Vn equal to R3 plus R4, or we can just say R4 plus R3, divide by R4 minus R1 over R2 times R3. Very interesting. So that is exactly the equation we were looking to find for the voltage gain of this very interesting circuit. Uh, there are a couple of observations about this voltage gain that we need to be careful about. So this is equation number three. And one thing you can observe here is uh, denominator is always less than numerator. Um, because in numerator, you're adding a positive value, which is R3, a passive resistor to R4. In denominator, you're subtracting uh, a positive number from R4. So naturally, denominator is less than numerator always. So you can see that uh, denominator, I'm going to write it here. So uh, denominator is less than numerator always in this circuit. OK, it's less than numerator. And as a result, we get voltage gain in this circuit is always greater than 1. That's very interesting. Keep that in mind. I'm going to use it for the input in, uh, negative input resistor. So for input resistor, it's very straightforward. Uh, we have V in I1. So by definition, R in, or the input resistor in this circuit, is just the uh, division of V in by I1. OK. Um, now, I1, I already wrote it here, right? There you go. This is what I wrote for I1, relating it to, um, to V in and V plus. But at the same time, we already have, uh, or it doesn't matter, you can just relate it to, if you want, you can relate it to just um, um, V in. That's all, that's all right. So, um, what I'm trying to say is, um, um, let's just substitute. Maybe that's the best thing to do before saying any other statement. So let's keep the V in in the numerator as it's supposed to. And uh, I am going to use equation number, uh, say, this one, the definition of I1. And uh, I'm going to substitute with V in minus uh, V plus divided by R1. 
or you know maybe even the better thing to do before this one is this one uh, rather than using that equation maybe i can do it this way i1 as you can see is a series is a current that goes through the series of r1 and r2 between v in and v out so i can just say r i1 is v in minus v out divided by series of r1 and r2 so v in minus v out divided by r1 plus r2 okay so uh, it become r1 plus r2 times v in divided by v in instead of v out i'm going to apply as you can see v out is av times v in so minus av minus av times v in okay um, v in cancel out from both numerator and denominator and as a result what i get uh, is this outcome that is r1 plus r2 divided by 1 minus av remember this is the r in that you're computing very interesting so numerator is r1 divided by r12 yes is a positive number uh, denominator is so let me just clean this up so that it, it's uh, it's easily observable so what we are seeing is this is equal to r1 plus r2 divided by 1 minus av r1 plus r2 is positive number 1 minus av is always a negative number in denominator because of 4 4 says av is always greater than 1 so 1 minus av is always a negative number therefore if i just uh, move things uh, change things in this way r in is negative r1 plus r2 times or divide by av minus 1 and since av is always greater than 1 now this number here is a positive multiplied by negative number so no wonder that input register in this circuit is a negative value assuming circuit is properly biased and stable so i'm going to change the color so that this is observable r in is simply this outcome and is always less than zero is negative register and of course av is already found here a couple of observation um, of course if you properly uh, set things right in terms of um, um, in terms of uh, bios and a stable circuit for example let's say you divide this whole thing by r3 you get uh, av equal to r4 uh, let me put it this way r4 divided by r3 in numerator plus one and then in denominator what you have is r4 divided by r3 uh, and then you have um, minus r1 divided by r2 And uh, you, can, you can go back to the condition of a stability in this circuit that clearly says R4, R4 over R3 should be greater than R1 over R2. And you can see that that exactly shows up in denominator. So as a part of a stability requirement, the denominator in this AD or voltage gain is always a positive number. So again, uh, AD is positive and also um, AD is greater than 1. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that. And... Uh, uh, if, for example, I mean, as a special condition, if, for example, you set R4 over R3 uh, equal to R1 over R2, which is not the right thing, then, of course, the denominator becomes zero and AV it goes to infinity. If, for example, in another scenario, let's say you set, um, um, just, just let's say back the formula for AV, if you set R2 equal to zero, R2 equal to infinity, basically open R2, no remove r2 then r2 goes to infinity this part goes away the gain simply become one plus uh, r3 over r4 as expected it become the the standard not the standard non um, the standard non-inverting amplifier so i'm just giving you special cases for instance um, for example for gain uh, if you set if r2 is set to infinite or goes to infinity, basically open open R2, then it becomes standard non-inverting 
um, amplifier and the voltage gain is simply 1 plus R3 over R4. All right then, I hope that um, you found this and you find this uh, discussion and illustration of a realization and implementation of negative, resi negative resistor using one op amp helpful.